There seems to be a lot of confusion around the grid boxes in Formula 1, why some drivers are getting penalties and others don't. But that's why in this video I'm going to go through all the rules surrounding the Formula 1 grid boxes and when they should be getting a penalty. So firstly, the grid boxes are separated and staggered in a one by one formation and the rows are being separated by 16 metres. And a feature being trialled at the Australian Grand Prix, which I do hope is continued for the rest of the season, is a central guidance white line to help the drivers line up correctly. As this was a trial, only the front four drivers had this guidance line, but hopefully this will continue and roll out for the other 16 drivers. But with some circuits, some drivers actually prefer being slightly sideways in their grid box to basically get a better launch, and that's due to the actual start-finish line not being entirely straight. For example, tracks like Imola or Monaco or Brazil. Now, a big talking point was actually the grid box actually having its width extended by 20 centimeters, meaning the overall width is now 2.7 meters. And for reference, a Formula One car is around two meters. So when the driver's line up, their car is needing to be inside the box and to help them visually see where they need to stop, a yellow reference line is painted to indicate where their front wheel needs to be. This is acting as a visual aid for the drivers as seeing the actual white grid box inside the cockpit, it's basically impossible. And that's partly due to this new generation of car where the actual Pirelli wheels are a lot bigger, but also the ride height is actually being elevated. Pretty standard rules, so then what actually gives you that five second penalty? Well, one rule which you won't get a penalty for is if your car's wheels are touching the white box line. This is what a lot of viewers spotted Max doing at the race restart in Australia with his front wing clearly over the white box line. However, his front wheels are on the white line and in the FIA Formula 1 sporting regulations, you would only receive a penalty if any part of the contact patch of its front tyres outside of the lines, in brackets front and sides, at the time of the start signal. So yes, the Formula 1 wheels can touch the grid box white line, however, it's such a small margin of error and if you just go slightly across it, then bang, you got a five second penalty. But this also slightly refers to when people have done a false start before and haven't received a penalty because they've kept it within the box and there wasn't enough movement to actually trigger the onboard transponder and therefore didn't receive a penalty. For example, with Bottas in Hungary in 2020, he did a small jump start, but the sensors in the track didn't detect enough movement but remained within his grid box. With the regulation stating, move before the start signal is given, such judgment being made by an FIA approved and supplied transponder fitted to each car. And so by breaking these rules like Alonso in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, we can see here that Alonso's left wheel is clearly over the line, which is the reason why he received a five second penalty. But it's for reasons like this why the grid boxes have been extended and why the guidance line is being trialled. But I do need to factor in here that there are clear other examples of other drivers breaching these rules and seemingly just getting away with it. But that's where the decisions lies with the FIA stewards who should be treating all drivers equally no matter your starting position on the grid. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this because it seems to be an ongoing issue. Let me know if you think the FIA need to do more on this or if you think the drivers as of Australia have got it all sorted and they need to just work it out themselves so let me know down in the comments below but thanks very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time